High levels of surge modular and analog synthesis. In this video I'm going to show you some of the techniques that can be got out of the surge TKB sequencer with regard to random functions. And for this I'm using um, a surge modular I built last winter which is a Euro rack version of the Surge 79 series. Very similar configuration to the Surge 79 series in three panels and uh, uses a mix of uh, analog research, ARC modules and random source modules. Plus I've added a MIDI interface and a uh, 2HP uh, tune module for uh, quantizing. So in this little package now I'm going to show you how these random features work which are not really very well documented as far as I know. Certainly not in the paper documentation for the search. So uh, we'll start here with um, a quick look at what the what the surge TKB has in the way of inputs and outputs. Uh, on the left hand side this is the ARC, the analog research uh, version of the sequencer which is a small footprint. Uh, so this has outputs here when on the old surge uh, modular they were all up the, on the top here but we have the outputs here, the ABCD cycling output, uh, separate outputs for A, B, C and D rows, nicely lined up with the rows. And then we have a keyboard voltage output, a keyboard pulse output, a pressure output. And then on the other side we have a bunch of inputs which are in red. And we have the vertical clock, the clock, the hold, the up down switch um, and because uh, obviously default is to go up and then the random which is what we'll be looking at today especially plus two inputs for reset. So the first uh, random function we're going to look at uh, is something which is perhaps the least obvious and that is the random that comes out of the keyboard voltage output. That's the one that's normally used if you're playing the keyboard and you want a voltage out of it. And the voltage that comes out of the keyboard ranges over quite a wide range uh, of about 5 volts. So these steps, uh, if they are not scaled in some way, are quite far apart. So normally for a tune, tuned um, playing of the keyboard you'd want to uh, not plug it into the one volt per octave, rather you'd plug it into a scalable input. Okay, but let's look at uh, first of all how this random first random function works with a keyboard voltage output. To make this I've got a very simple sound which is a, a, a pulsing, a clocked sound being produced by one new timbral oscillator. I'm using the variable output so I can have a little bit of change in the timbre which is being controlled by the same universal slope generator. So I'm using this one universal slope generator as a clock uh, to clock my sequencer. And I'm taking the output of the keyboard voltage and I'm plugging it into the one volt per octave one volt per octave input of the new timbral oscillator. Uh, so in order to get the random function to come out of the keyboard voltage we take the clock that's coming from the universal slope generator and we put it into simply into random, just random on its own. So every time random gets a clock it is choosing a different point on the keyboard. it's doing it automatically 
uh, on a random selection. Uh, so there's no visual clue to what's going on here. If you didn't know that random is coming out of the keyboard voltage, you probably wouldn't have found that. Okay, the second thing you can look at is that at the same time as this is um, creating these random pitches, you can still run the sequencer. So just to show you that, we can take another clock, which is another universal slope generator, and we'll clock the sequencer with it using the clock input of the sequencer. Now, we're still getting the same random voltages out of the keyboard voltage, but the sequencer is running at its own pace. It can be a completely different pace. So we can now um, listen to another oscillator and hear what's happening with that. We'll take the A output into the one volt per octave. Okay, so now we can see that the sequencer is running, but we're still getting a random voltages out of the keyboard voltage output. Uh, the next funny thing is that if we uh, use the random uh, clock, the, thing, the clock that's clocking the random input, and we put it into the reset, that will um, reset the the uh, fast running sequencer from the other clock here at different places uh, on the sequence. So we get one slow random uh, voltage out and we're getting this very fast uh, running random voltage out at the same time. You can see that they're independent if I slow this down. Or we'll speed it up. Of course, these two things could be synchronized in some kind of way by divide using a divided. Uh, clock one divided clock to clock the um, uh, the random one have the faster clock undivided clock to run the fast sequencer but I'll let you work that out for yourself if we go back to the beginning and look at some of the implications of having fixed voltages coming out of the keyboard voltage out output here they're, they're uh, equal intervals, so there's 16 different um, fixed steps. Um, then, if we put the keyboard voltage into the 1 volt per octave, the steps are quite far apart. So if we want them to be closer together, if we want the whole range of random voltages to be smaller, with respect to the pitch, and we should put the control into a scalable input. And for example, here I've tuned this scalable input so that between there, 1 and 13, there is an octave difference. So, and then we have the octave uh, and a, um, a minor third. Uh, for the whole range of the keyboard. So if we then clock that, we're going to be producing um, random voltages over a even-tempered uh, semitone scale. We put the clock into the random input. Again, we don't see what's going on here. We don't see which uh, steps it's choosing. But we can hear that these steps are now tuned to semitone intervals. But um, we should look at the other most basic way of using the random function, which is to 
randomly select a position in the sequencer. And that's done by sending the pulse, the clock pulse, to the random input, but simultaneously sending that pulse, sorry, that was the wrong one, the random input, uh, simultaneously sending that pulse to the reset. And then the uh, the random is choosing a different uh, step in this sequence. So now I can take any row out of the sequence. So I'll take row A. I've tuned row A incidentally to a diatonic scale. Um, so um, a diatonic major scale. So I'll put that into so it's into the one volt per octave. And now it's choosing a random step. This, when you have the random into the random coupled to the reset, you're choosing a random step from the sequence. So obviously, each of the sequence rows has its own uh, random choice. Okay, so that's the other most basic way of using the random selection. Random selection of the sequence of steps. And of course that means, in actual fact, that you can potentially randomly select, um, say, chords, which are set up on these four rows, four rows at the same time. Okay, um, another feature is that one has to remember that you can use these rows not only for pitch, you can use them for other functions as well. For example, you can uh, use a row to determine some logical on-off situation. So I've got this D row here um, tuned to on-off. This is going to give us the opportunity to um, uh, decide on whether um, a particular random note that's selected is uh, repeated or not. So um, I'm going to take the row D and I'm going to put it through a comparator because it seems that the the row itself it doesn't have sharp enough uh, transitions to to really trigger something properly uh, or not. It doesn't trigger anything, everything properly anyway. So I'll take the comparator out. I'm using the the divide by n comparator in, um, module here for input into the comparator, output from the comparator. And I'm going to use that to sample this. I'll take the take the voltage that's going to the one volt per octave. I'll put it into the sample and hold, which is the step generator, of course. And I'll take the output of the step generator and put it into the one volt per octave. And now, so now this row is determining which notes are held. Because uh, if, uh, if a random choice hits a knob that is high, then that will go through the comparator and it will sample that particular note that has been chosen at that moment. And that'll be held until a new sample comes in and it is taken. So we get this um, sequence of random notes with uh, some of them held on to. So that's some of the things you can do with the random function of the Surge TKB. Um, thanks for joining me. <laughs>